I said good morning, everyone. There we go. Let's stand together. Let's sing this morning. We are forever grateful of what the Lord does for us. Amen. Let's sing it together. Our God and King, His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing it. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing it. Sing praise. Come on, sing. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God. God is strong, God is with us forever, forever. Here we go. From the rising to the setting sun, His love endures forever. And by the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. praise amen you may be seated god bless you so good to see all of you thank you so much for being here today to come and be a part of our service and i'm going to begin our service by lighting our uh, first candle of advent from last week this was the candle anybody remember candle of hope today we're going to be lighting in just a few minutes another candle and uh, the garmin family is going to be coming uh, to help us with that. But before we do that, I want to welcome you. And if you are visiting with us today for the first time, it is an honor that you have chosen to come and be with us today. So thank you for doing that. If you would, somewhere near you at the end of each pew, you'll find a little connection card. And if you would take that card and just write some information on that, we'll be receiving an offering in a little bit in the service. Just put that into play and uh, we will have a record of your visit. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, welcome to you as well. It is awesome to have you virtually today. Hope that someday soon that you will visit us in person. We would love to have you here and do that, but it's good to have that tool. Uh, a few announcements this morning that we want to make uh, um, note of. Let me start with this. Let me start with this. Next Sunday, everybody listen. Next Sunday, one week from today, Sunday school will begin at 9 a.m. I got everybody's eyes. Sunday school will begin at 9 a.m. Worship will begin at 10 o'clock. This is a one-time, one-week deal. And we're doing this because we're participating in the Christmas parade that day. Yes, and we have to be there around 1 o'clock in order to get lined up. So uh, for those of you who have signed up for that, and there's still room for others if you have not, I do not have the information to give you at this point. They have not given me that. 
Uh, you, you actually have until the 6th, which is tomorrow, to uh, sign up to put a float in the parade. And I think the JCs are waiting until they get all of the entries. Then they're going to send out emails that says, you're supposed to be here at this time, you're supposed to be here at this time, this is where you got to go, okay? So I don't have that information, but as soon as I get it, I will send out an email, make sure that everybody that's involved in that knows. So be watching that. We'll be talking about it throughout the week as well. But again, next Sunday morning, Sunday school, 9 a.m., worship at 10 a.m., okay? Uh, also next Sunday, let me remind you that it is time to uh, begin the process of uh, putting our budget into place for next year and also the names for our nominating committee. So next Sunday, you will be presented with a list of all of that. And then the following Sunday on the 19th, we will have a short business meeting uh, in order to vote on those things to put those in place for the following year. So that's forthcoming. Also, don't forget, this coming Wednesday night at 5.30, we are having our Christmas feast along with the ugly sweater contest. There we go. We got Vanna over here. It's going to help you out just a little bit, show you this. So this is coming up. Everybody see that? Ugly sweater contest. I knew she could turn letters. I just didn't know how well. So there we go. So glad for that. But come and be a part of that. That's going to be fun. That's at 530. And um, we will continue that. We will not have a prayer meeting or a Bible study Wednesday night. We're just going to have games. And this will be a fellowship time for us on Wednesday night. So come and be a part of that. And then following that at 730, we will have our final choir practice going into uh, the following week, which will be uh, next week where we'll do our Christmas music. So come be a part of that. We'd love to have you. Also, you'll see an announcement December 11th, which is next Saturday, a paint party. Uh, youth trip fundraiser there. Sign up in the foyer. And speaking of that, we also have, uh, come on, Vanna, help me out. We have some mistletoe uh, that is ready for you. <laughs> you can get those. Just see Lisa on that. Looks like she's got control of that. So see her. She can help you get that done. I think they're five and a quarter for um, the mistletoe thing. So that be. Yeah, that came out of one of these trees here. So yeah, yeah. I don't know how they got it, and I'm not going to ask. But uh, but anyway, it's out of one of those trees. I don't forget next Saturday, December the 11th. Uh, also, that's the same day as the paint party. Just a lot going on. 730 guys, we're going to meet for breakfast and a Bible study. Be a part of that. Uh, Lottie Moon is this month. We are um, receiving money for the Lottie, Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Uh, we usually do around $2,000 for that. So it's time to start donating for that as well. Uh, if you are a senior, let us know if you'd like to come for uh, Seniors Christmas Brunch on December the 16th. You can either let myself know or Tasha Garman, and uh, just let us know on that today or very, very soon so we can be prepared for you. Be a, a Seniors Christmas Brunch, December the 16th from 10 to 12. Also, our Cornerstone Family Mailbox, you'll see it out in the foyer. We've had some of our little ones today delivering Christmas cards, so... Put your cards in there. Don't take them to the post office. Put stamps on them. Spend all that money. If it's for the church, put them in that box. We'll make sure they get distributed. Save you a few dollars on postage on that. And it's just good fellowship to be able to do it that way. Also, uh, our living it class is having a thing. Dave, Susan, would y'all like to say something about that? Come eat. Come eat. Amen. That sounds good to me. Steak, potatoes. <laughs> Sounds good, but y'all see the announcement there? <laughs> That's on December 17th. If you're a part of that class or would like to be a part of that class, just let them know. Amen. Y'all come and be a part of that. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's what it ought to be. <laughs> All right, good. Don't forget again the Christmas parade coming up next Sunday and then the children's Christmas program on the 19th. Lisa, you got anything you want to say about that? I don't have a sign for that, sorry. <laughs> um, actually, um, I just need the kids to wear their Christmas, dress all up for Christmas, and, all, and they're just going to meet me on the stage. They're just going to be on the stage. So look good, smell good, take a bath, <laughs> and wear all your merry, merry Christmas clothes, okay? Sounds good. Looking forward to it. Any further announcements? Keith, am I missing anything? Okay. Ken. How old are you? Well, no. no, I'm kidding. 
don't answer that. I don't, I hadn't even thought about it. If you think you qualify as a senior, show up. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's fine with us. The more the merrier. So. All right. I don't know. We hadn't, I hate to put a number on it because. 23 and older. 23 and older. There you go. <laughs> I can get a cup of coffee right now at, at Hardy's for free. And I'm. <laughs> I don't know. They got pretty good coffee. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's pray together this morning and we'll begin. Lord, thank you again for this day. Just an honor to be back in your house. Lord, who said worship can't be fun? And we're just grateful, Lord, to be able to come and be a part of this today with our family and friends. And just a wonderful day, Lord, that we're going to uh, worship you together corporately here. So, Father, we ask that you bless our efforts this day. Just help us, Lord, to uh, be everything you want us to be. And Father, just let something in this service draw us closer to you today. We're just so thankful for your love, mercy, and your grace, and the blessings that you bestow on us. And Lord, if there's one here today that doesn't know you, we just pray that they'll come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ this day. So we thank you, we love you, it's in Jesus we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Miss Lisa. Well, good morning again. So the candle today is the Bethlehem candle or the candle of preparation or the faith candle. I'm going to talk about grace. <laughs> and so it's called grace equals growth. And as I was doing my morning Bible study, I come across this and it just kind of stuck with me throughout the day. And I'm like, I'm going to share it with you guys. One of the greatest blessings in my life is a special little girl we call Little Bit. Adoption is amazing, but it's hard also. When our Little Bit joined the family, she had to learn an entirely different way of living. She was used to hunger, isolation, abandonment, and abuse, and now she was part of a family, a real family, a noisy family. Adjusting wasn't automatic, nor was it easy. For any of us. One day early on in the adjusting process, I found Little Bit crawling under the table eating crumbs off the floor. Her full lunch plate still sat on the table, delicious food untouched. Our beloved daughter, the one we'd waited on for years, preferred the safety of crumbs, the self-forging to sorry, receiving something unproven and risky from someone she didn't know or trust yet. My little bit taught me a very important lesson. lesson. Receiving grace has to be learned. Hebrews 12, 15. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the, the grace of God. I'm reminded of the Israelites who wanted to go back to Egypt with its garlic and leeks rather than rely on God to provide something amazing out there in the middle of the desert. God had so many things about himself his plan, and themselves to show them, yet they crave the safety of the familiar, even when the familiar was slavery. The truth is, we are all adopted into God's family, into a new lifestyle and a way of relating. Learning grace can be scary, but it's necessary. It's the real key to spiritual growth. Second Peter 3.18, but you grow through grace. So grace equals growth. Over time, Little Bit started to eat that grace. It took me getting real creative, and it took her drinking grace like a baby from a cup. But slowly, very slowly, she began to learn the ways of grace. She started to trust the woman who put food on her plate on the table. And here's what I learned. Just as eating happens one bite at a time, several times a day, and just moving forward happens one step at a time. So grace is received one day, one moment, one opportunity at a time. As much as we all like the idea of miracle fixes and mountaintop experiences and conferences that change everything, God more often than not asks us to gather our miracle manna daily in small bite-sized increments. Learn the ways of grace. Let grace empower you, change your actions, attitudes, and even your identity. 
be saturated in scripture because grace really does equal growth. Remember Hebrews 12, 15, look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. And remember 2 Peter 3, 18, but you grow through grace. It's through grace that we grow, stay in the word. But I just, this, just a child, imagine a child not eating and actually under the table eating crumbs because of not having the trust. Isn't it like us? how we'll sometimes hide and we just barely pick at what God has for us. Remember, we grow through grace. Thank the Lord for his amazing grace. Amen. Well, let's stand together. Let's take a few minutes. Let's fellowship one with another, and we'll begin singing here in just a few minutes. back to your seats. Here's a great Christmas carol called Hark! The Herald Angels Sing. Let's sing this together. Let's sing it. Hark! The Herald Angels Sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joy Join the triumph 
of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn King Christ by together lord we're just so grateful once again uh, to be in your house to be able to sing your praises these wonderful christmas carols that remind us of the day and the night of your birth and finally we do want to hail the incarnate deity which is jesus christ father we're just so grateful that uh, for these reminders that we have through these songs of what you did for us so long ago coming to this earth being born to die so, Father, we're grateful. We just pray that today that, uh, that you will bless each person we want to intercede for on our prayer list. Father, you know them by name. You know every hair, the number on the top of their heads. So, Father, you know what their needs are. So, we just pray a special blessing on them. Father, we're thankful for this time of worship that we could receive an offering together to help further your kingdom. We just pray, Father, that uh, you will just bless the gift, bless the giver. And Father, we just pray that you will just bless us in such a way here at Quarterstone. You know our needs. So we just pray, Father, that you meet those. Help us to honor you through it. And all these things we give to you in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you.
Amen. Thank you, Suzanne. Amen. Well, it is my honor and my privilege this morning to introduce to you folks uh, somebody from um, our hometown who went to church with us for many, many years. And I don't know if she's going to have anything to say. I'll let her decide. But uh, she has been a friend of mine for uh, the better part of 20 years. And uh, just she sang uh, with our praise team at North Walterboro when we were there together. And um, I... Our paths crossed not long ago, about a year ago down in Augusta. She had a work-related thing and came down. We had dinner together, and just in passing, we said, you know, we need to get you to come to the church and sing. And uh, so here we are a year later, and uh, we're making this happen this morning. And I should have done this a long time ago. But y'all please make welcome Miss Michelle Bellevue. Lisa's my fan. Yes. So if you want to sign up, just talk to Lisa. I'm just kidding. Um, so thank you so much. I feel like Beyonce with this fan. So I may have to like <laughs> turn it down a little bit here. <laughs> there, gotcha. All right. Um, <laughs> that's all right. So I use that gel in his hair. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for having me today. I'm really excited. Like Steve said, my name is Michelle Bellevue. I have been friends with Steve and Lisa since before my youngest baby was born, and she's 18. And um, it's pretty crazy, right? Uh, but you don't know who your real friends are until things in your life start going downhill. And they have always been there through thick and thin, and I'm so grateful for them. But I'm not going to be able to look at Lisa Hanna today because she's going to be over here crying, and we can't be having that. So, and Michelle has to. No, I'm just kidding. I'll tell you a little bit more about myself later. Um, but the first couple of songs that I'm going to be singing are about Christmas because it's Christmas, and this is my favorite time of the year. Not only because this is when Jesus was born, but because it's a time for families to come together, friends and family, and to celebrate his birth. And I, my friends tell me to not talk before I sing because I always like start crying. <laughs> but I mean, if it doesn't make you emotional, what would, right? And so um, the first song is Mary Did You Know? And it's okay, guys, I got you. I won't say the artist. But y'all know this, this song, and it really makes you think about Mary. And did she really know what was fixing to happen? Did she? Did she know that her son was going to die for us? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. But she took on the burden, and we are so grateful so I am going to go ahead and sing this song before I start crying. So <laughs> have at it. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water Mary did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new your child that you delivered will soon deliver you Mary did you know that your baby boy would give sight to the blind man Mary did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand did you know that your baby boy has walked where when you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? Again, the lame 
you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb the sleeping child you're holding is a great right now I don't hold nothing back okay <laughs> I'm in church and the Lord wants us to worship him freely so let me tell you ma'am if you feel like putting your hands up if you want to stand up you do it you are not going to bother me the Lord wants you to worship him being in this place and especially at Christmas I mean come on every day not even, not, I'm, I'm sorry. I know we only got a little bit of time. We got to go eat because I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm kidding, by the way. I am, but I can wait. Um, I'm, <laughs> no, um, so I love to play around and, and be silly. But um, this next song is called Bethlehem Morning. I'm doing it, and it's just so funny because y'all are lighting the Bethlehem candle today. This is a very old song. I've been singing it since as long as I can remember, um, but it speaks about that morning and when the death of Jesus, and it's very powerful. So please listen to the words as I sing Bethlehem Morning. <laughs> Lift up your heads, no need to mourn. His hand is stretched out to you. For unto us a child is born, his promise to
the child that was born there. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And He will come again. Yes, he will. And we better be ready. Just saying. One more time, Michelle Bellevue. Yeah. She'll be back in a few minutes and sing a couple of more for us. But uh, she mentioned this morning that uh, this morning's candle is the Bethlehem candle, and that's a name for it. It's also known as the candle of the way or the preparation candle. So I have asked the Garmin family, uh, Tasha and Billy and BQ, if they would come today and uh, explain this candle to you and light it for us this morning. Bethlehem candle reminds us of the birth of Christ and his purpose of birth to offer salvation to all of us. It also reminds us that Jesus is the only way to heaven and that we all must prepare ourselves through our faith in Jesus Christ. We are all lost in sin in Christ the light sent to the world to show them the way out of darkness. Luke 3, 4 to 6 says, As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. John 14, 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thank you so much, uh, Billy, Tasha, and BQ. Amen. God bless y'all. Thank you for doing that. You know, the Advent candle is about a lot of things, but what it boils down to, it's about Jesus. That's what this candle's about. It's about how he came to earth in, incarnate, came through the Virgin Mary, came to the earth to die for us. That was the purpose. And he accomplished that, and he did all of that living a sinless life. So it is just an amazing life that his life continues today because he rose from the grave. The grave couldn't hold him. And this is such a wonderful testimony that I think we should be telling everybody about. And this next song reminds us of that as we sing together, My Jesus. Let's stand together as we sing. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. You're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Sing it. He makes the way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't say Let me tell you about my Jesus His love is strong and his grace is free 
the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus and let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From broken dreams and wasted years And tell the past to disappear Oh, and let me tell you about my dreams And all the wrong things that you were Going undo if you could We can work it out for your good And let me tell you about my dreams He makes a way when there ain't no way He rises up from an empty there ain't no sinner that he can't say. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And his love is strong and his grace is free. The good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. Take my cross to Calvary, pay the price for all my guilty. Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh, He makes a way when there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that He can't say. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and His grace is free. The good news is I know that He can do for you what He's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus and let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that he can change your life today? Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Amen. Good stuff. I'm going to ask Michelle if she would come back and sing another one for us. Is that all right with everybody? She do that? Okay. I'm so glad we did that before this next song. I don't know if y'all saw me up here, but it's hard for me to sit still in church. Sorry. I don't apologize for that. Ever. Do what? You better believe it. All right. So, <laughs> so I wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about myself um, really quickly. I, and that's, a, that's pretty much a lie because I talk a lot. Right, guys? <laughs> Shut up, Steve. <laughs> they know me very well. Um, so I became a Christian when I was a little girl, probably the same age as Miss BQ down here. She's nine, right? So it was about that, that old <clears throat> um, and this is sort of a testimony. hope that's okay. Um, so I went to church every Sunday, every Sunday night, every Wednesday with my mom. Praise the Lord for my mom. So she's watching. <laughs> um, and I love you. Um, but praise the Lord for my mom, okay? I... Um, when I graduated high school, I became a not-so-great person. Drinking, doing things I shouldn't be doing. I won't tell you what that was, but um, not doing good things. Not being where the Lord wanted me to be, okay? And my mom was like, I'm sending you to your aunt in Texas. I lived in North Carolina at the time. Um, and she did. And I'm so grateful that she did. Um, my aunt, who's watching, um, and I love you very much, too. Um, <laughs> we have a really close family. Um, anyway, my aunt took me to her church, 
and she took me in and loved me like her own daughter. Um, our family is just so close, close to God. I got to see my dad's grandfather, or grandfather, his dad, so my grandfather, for the last time before he passed away. Um, lots of blessings in that trip, lots of good stuff, okay? When I came back to North Carolina, I was living with my mom because I had moved back home. She made me come back home. Um, but that's good because it was not in a good place. Um, met my ex-husband. I have two beautiful children by him. I'm so grateful. Went through a time where he left us. He left me with my babies. And again, so grateful for my mom because she was there to help me take care of my kids. And my brothers helped me take care of my kids, my oldest children. And, and then I, I went into a really bad place. And you're like, how do you go into a bad place with two babies? So I'm like, well, when you don't do what you're supposed to do, the Lord is going to let you go, okay? He's going to watch you fall. But he's going to be right there to pick you right back up. I went to church the whole time, uh, met somebody, just had a terrible relationship. And my dad and I did not have a great relationship. Um, but you know what? I met my husband now. And you are going to laugh, but I met him on the Internet <laughs> um, in a Yahoo chat room. We weren't really looking for each other. But the Lord gave me my husband at, the, at my bottom, the very bottom. <laughs> and um, he lived here in Walterboro. You all want to know where I was? I was in Texas. And I moved from Texas into Walterboro. And now we have three beautiful children, my oldest two. Sierra and Alex, they're 23 and 22. And then my baby girl, she's 18 in college, which is weird. It's weird having a kid in college. But through all of that, you know, we all have hard times. We all go through these relationships. I've had friendships that have crashed and burned. I've had people who say they were my friends, but they really weren't my friends. And to this day, I still have people who say they were my friends but I'm not sure if they are. But you know what? I do have one friend that I can always count on, and that is Jesus. Amen. I don't care what's going on in my life. I can tell you, I could sit up here and talk like 12 hours about my life. I could probably write a book, okay? But I lost my dad. Did not know I lost my dad. That's how bad our relationship was. That was hard for me because I didn't get to tell him that I forgave him. But I forgive him in my heart. You know, and um, the Lord wants you to forgive. And I don't know who needs to hear that today, but if you have someone that you need to forgive because they have hurt you so badly that you hate them, the Lord wants you to forgive because he forgives no matter what. And because of Jesus, our sins are forgiven that doesn't mean you go out and you sin all the time. But you know that. And if you don't have Jesus in your heart today, I encourage you to get to know him. Listen to the Holy Spirit. I didn't finish my testimony. <laughs> um, I gave my life back to Jesus when my son was a baby. And I haven't turned back. And I don't know what I would do without Jesus. And I don't know how people who are not saved go through life without him. Because I've never been there. You know what I... Do y'all understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus is always going to be there. And he knows your name. And he knows my name. And he will be there at the front of your battle as long as you let him. And not try to fight that battle by yourself. Because you will not win. And then when he's there, right here, fighting that battle for you, life is going to be grand. Not saying it's always going to be easy, but you have to trust him to take care of you. Right, Steve? And Steve and Lisa, 
Hannah and I, he's not kidding when I say we've been friends, <laughs> we've been friends forever. We have gone through some really rough times. And without them, I wouldn't have been able to get through it. My husband doesn't come to church with me. My husband did not come to church with me with my three little children. I went to church by myself because I knew that's what the Lord wanted for me to do. And my grandma, y'all, this is funny, she'd call me every Sunday, did you go to church? Yes, ma'am. Did you take them children? Yes, ma'am, I did. I took the kids to church. But praise the Lord for my family, for my friends who are my family, because, y'all, I don't know where I would be. And so this next song, I may get a little rowdy up in here, but that's all right. And you're welcome to stand up and praise with me. It's um, called He Knows My Name, and that's as much as I can say. Um, but just, uh, yeah, just listen to the words of this song. And um, it kind of tells my whole story in one song. I have lots of songs that do that. <laughs> but this one, I um, oh, well, let me tell you this really quickly. My oldest daughter, Sierra, she's 23. She sings in her praise team at her church. Um, she just graduated from college. Woohoo! Uh, but she moved home. Woohoo! Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, if my kids are going to go anywhere after not having a place to go, I want them to come home. Because um, that's where there's, that's where I am. <laughs> now, my son. Got kicked, uh, got asked, uh, I shouldn't say kicked out. He got asked to leave the Navy um, after a year and a half, and he came home. My husband goes, why do our children keep coming home <laughs> after they leave? And you know what, though? It's their security, and that's like with Jesus, right? We always come back to Jesus, but um, my kids do come home. But this song, she is like 110 pounds, but when she sings this song, she becomes a giant because it's all about Jesus and all in how he fights our battles. And yeah, and I'm sorry if I'm talking too much. <laughs> but I, I just kind of want you to get to know who I am. I have been singing for a very long time. Um, Steve called me one Sunday. Oh, on a Sunday? You didn't call me on Sunday. During the week, one week. He's like, hey, Michelle, how do you feel about being on a um, praise team? And I was like, oh, I've never been on one of those before. And uh, I'm, I'm really grateful that he did. We had a good thing going. I have been singing with Steve for a very long time. But um, I've come a long way. And I'm very proud of myself. I'm proud that I trust Jesus. And I'm going to continue. And I, and I really hope that you guys do too. So I have one more song after this, but it's not till later. So um, for, I know I said this before, um, but um, thank you. Thank you for having me. Y'all are so sweet. And I love watching you guys praise out there. It's great. I just, I just love it. So thank you all so much for letting me be here. Go ahead, guys. I promise I'm done. <laughs> Yes, he knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. And know how he walks with me. Right?
Yes, it still amazes me that I am your friend. So now I pour. so grateful for you today. We're grateful for you every day. In this moment, I just want everybody to take a minute, just a minute, and fill the Holy Spirit that's in this place right now. Because boy, I'm telling you, it's really overwhelming me. I thank you for you sending your son to die on the cross for us. You didn't have to do that. I'm a mom. I can't imagine having to do that, my only son, and how hard it was for you. 
But we are grateful for that, Lord. I pray for these church members, for Steve and for Lisa, Lord. But if there is anyone here in this church right now who doesn't know you as their friend and their counselor and their comforter, Lord, I pray that you prick their hearts and that they come to know you today. At the end of this service, there's going to be a time for them to come forward. And even if they've already given their life to you, Lord, and they are not moving in the right direction, but they would like to fix that today, Lord, I pray that they come forward today and fix that with you. Having hatred in our hearts, needing to forgive someone, maybe walk straighter instead of sideways. Lord, I just pray that they come to know you today, closer to you. I thank you for your son, Jesus. I ask for blessings on Steve as he brings the message. And that if there's something that he says that wasn't in the sermon, that's okay. Because he's going by what you say. And we thank you. In his name we pray. Amen. I thought I was here. But I was here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you, Michelle. God bless you. Another hand from Michelle. Amen. <laughs> Great stuff. Uh, what Michelle did not tell you is I'm preparing here. Uh, she is the one that introduced Lisa and me all of those years ago. Oh, yeah, I did that too. <laughs> <laughs> so she's to blame. And um, just kidding. Well, it is so good to be back with y'all this morning and, and uh, just wonderful to be able to come and, and uh, talk about these candles a little bit more and have Michelle come. It's just been an honor to have her here today. So, so good. Glad that you're here today as well. And uh, I just believe that the hand of God has already been on our service this morning. He's moving in a mighty way. So we are just going to jump right into this today. Again, today we lit the second candle. And this is the candle of uh, preparation or the candle of the way. And we're going to talk pretty detailed about that this morning. We're going to refer to this candle as a few different names. And uh, I believe that you will be able to relate to all of those uh, by the time that we get to help us understand a little bit more about the meaning of this particular candle in the Advent season. So last week, if you'll remember for just a moment, um, we talked about the prophet Isaiah. You remember this? We talked about him at, at length and, and what he had foretold some 800 years before the prophecy actually came true. So we'll remember all of that. All of that came ahead of the nativity. And we know that this prophecy would soon unfold, and then the Christ child would be born in this little town of Bethlehem, hence the Bethlehem candle. So I was thinking and praying about this message. I couldn't help but think about how young parents prepare for a new child coming into the house. Some of y'all have been there more recently than others, and you know what I'm talking about. But they prepare for this new baby. And for me, it's been 26 years since I have done any kind of preparation like this, uh, not including grandchildren, because at our house, we prepare for the grands as if they were going to be living with us. And that's just kind of how it works in my house, all that comes with that. But the younger parents that are here today, I can imagine that you did the best that you possibly could, and, and this is for every parent, but you did the best that you possibly could to prepare for the changes that were about to come in your life. Perhaps you turned an extra bedroom into a nursery. Maybe you had showers where you hoped to, to stock up on, what is it, diapers and what is those onesies? Maybe you needed some ones, wipes. Got to have the wipes. So maybe you were hoping in these showers to be able to stock up on these kind. And, and dads, maybe you were the kind of dad that mapped out the exact route from your house to where your wife was going to be having the baby. I see some hands that says that's exactly what they did. And that's important to know. And, you know, perhaps maybe you even had some sort of pre-prepared bag that had all the little essentials that you were going to need. All you had to do was run and pick it up when she said, hey, it's go time. So you go and you pick this up and you're out the door. So you were ready. Right? I doubt that none of us could say that we were truly ready for that day. Tough day. 
hard. The birth of a child is a huge event. Doesn't get much bigger than that, does it? The miracle of childbirth is, is just mind-boggling to us. We don't understand how it works. We just know that it does. So it's a mind-boggling thing. This miracle of childbirth can simply just be overwhelming to us when we give it a lot of thought. Once the baby's here, we want to tell everybody. We want to make phone calls. Then we want to post pictures now on Facebook. Now it's Facebook official, right? We want to put it on Facebook. Some of you on Instagram. Some, some of you put a little short video on TikTok. What, whatever TikTok is. Whatever that is. But our lineage, listen, our lineage is being continued. And we want the world to know. So we make effort after effort after effort to announce the arrival of our child into the world the right way. That's what we want to do. We want to announce him with class. We want to announce him with dignity. We are proud parents. That's who we are. Now think of this with me. Multiply those efforts that we make, I'll just say by infinity. Multiply our child's birth by the, ver- by the birth of God's only Son. Can you imagine how God the Father must have felt? God had made all the preparations. Think of this with me. The angels were sitting on ready. Every star was in alignment. It was in its correct place. There was even a, a census that was established to put the right people at the right time in Bethlehem. Peasant girl named Mary, this carpenter named Joseph, they found themselves eventually in this little manger outside the town of Bethlehem. This would not have been an ordinary place to birth a child. Of course, there was nothing ordinary about this birth at all. There was no ordinary event here. This was complicated. It was the birth of the Son of the only God. This event, listen, this childbirth would change the world. As part of God the Father's preparation, He had also arranged for a particular herald. His name? John, the baptizer. John was what we know as the forerunner for the coming Messiah, who is Jesus Christ. He was sent ahead of Jesus to lay down the red carpet for him. John's job was to prepare the way by teaching on a particular subject, and that subject is repentance. That's what he was preaching. Turn with me, if you would, to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3. And we'll read a few verses together, beginning with verse 1 through 12. Stand with me as we read this together. Again, it's Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. You got it? Say, I got it? it. All right. Reads this way. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is who he was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair. He had a uh, a leather belt around his waist. His food was locust and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, 
whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up with chaff and unquenchable fire. Father, we're just grateful for this passage that we have to be able to explain to us a little bit about John the Baptist and his role and what our role should be today as Christians. So we're grateful. We love you. Anoint this from the top of it to the bottom. And Lord, we just know you want to use it in a mighty way today. It's in Jesus we pray. And all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Now, between the Old, Old Testament and the New Testament lies about 400 years. For 400 years, there were no prophecies. Nobody had heard anything from a prophet. There was silence from heaven. Then John appeared. And a great revival began to take place. Let me give you just a little background here on John for just a minute. He was also a miracle child. Okay? He was born to elderly parents by the names of Zechariah and Elizabeth. Elizabeth was barren. We know what barren means. She couldn't have children. So God created this miracle, again, preparation, to put John in the right place at the right time. All part of God's preparation. Now Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Elizabeth, the mother of John, were close. Jesus and John likely knew each other when they were growing up. Some scholars say that they were cousins. Luke chapter 1, verse 36 addresses this, and it even goes as far as to tell us that John was about six months older than Jesus. So they were close in age. John dressed in this camel hair, and as he did, he resembled the prophet Elijah. His message was also much like the prophet Elijah as he preached. They both demanded change, immense change, and they both demanded that we must repent. That's what their message was. So let's take a look at just a few things about John as he was preparing the way for the Lord this morning. First, let's consider what his message is. Again, John preached about repentance and he also preached about the kingdom of heaven. This is what it was. The word repent is a word that we have all heard. We've probably all used it in many, many forms. We all want forgiveness of our sins. And to have that, we must ask for it by repenting our sin to the Lord. The word repent actually has a meaning. And it means this, to change one's mind, but then act on the change. John was not interested in remorse. He wasn't satisfied with regret. What does verse 8 say? Verse 8 says this, Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. He was looking for evidence of not only a changed mind, but also a changed life. Folks, it's estimated that John, and this is mind-boggling, John delivered his message of repentance to people in the hundreds of thousands. That's a lot of people. They came from far and wide to hear him speak and then to witness the actual baptisms. Many of these that came, came with the utmost of sincerity. A lot of lives were changed there. Some came just to see the show and had no intention of repenting. Jesus tells us this in the parable of the two sons. Matthew 21, 31 and 32 says this. I have it on the screen. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first they answered. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe in him. These Pharisees and Sadducees, they were coming, they thought that they were good enough to please God. They didn't think that they had a need to repent. They didn't feel like their sin was on that level. 
In fact, the only thing that the Pharisees and the Sadducees could agree on was opposing Jesus Christ. That's where they could agree. But John's message, hear this, was strong. And it was strong in the fact that Israel had sinned and was in need of severe repentance. His message was one of judgment. He wanted these religious leaders to lead the way to repentance. Got to lead from the front, right? He wanted and expected them to lead this way. If the nation would repent, the way to Jesus Christ would be prepared. Church, let me ask you a question. Listen, is this where we are as the universal church? Are we hearing the message of repentance? Are we hearing what's being preached about repentance, but yet ignoring it because we think we're good enough? Are we part of the hundreds of thousands that hear the Word of God each week and feel remorse and feel regret from our sins, but we don't turn away from them? I'm so grateful, listen, so grateful for the ones who come with great sincerity, do their best to change their sinful way, but on the other side of that, I'm so burdened, listen, by the ones who are playing church. Oh, Pastor Steve, you're going to go there? Yeah. yeah. Going to go there? I'm required to go there. We ought to go there. Church, you need to know this. I am tired, and we should be tired, of seeing people that I know go to these churches where they're made to feel good for an hour and a half and then leave without making changes in their lives. I'm tired of seeing these churches with all of this pomp and circumstance that preach an empty prosperity gospel. Tired of that. I'm tired of churches that don't preach repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'm tired of preachers that don't preach that sin is sin, hell is hot, and the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. As John the Baptist prepared the way for the coming of Jesus then, we must prepare the way in our own lives right now for the second coming, Jesus Christ. He's coming, church. Are you prepared? Church, I have such a burden for those who are not taking their preparation seriously. It hurts my heart to see people that I know, people that I love, just living in sin and thinking all is well. Folks, listen. If you're living without repentance in your life, all is not well. It's not. The Bible says that we must repent of our sins. Listen, you cannot have true peace in your life if all of this sin is weighing you down. If you claim to be a Christian today, there is no way that you can be at peace with something that separates you from God. This is what sin does. That's what it does. It separates you from Him. He can't look at it. He can't tolerate it. Until you repent of it, there is a wedge between you and Him, and you put it there. Confess it. Repent it. Repent of it with action. By turning away from it. And restore your relationship with Him in peace as you continue your preparations to meet Him face to face. Verses 3 and 4 show us where John the Baptist actually received his authority. He was fulfilling the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. We've seen this in several places now, but it's something that we should read often. It says, a voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Luke 1, 16 and 17 also shows his authority. It says he will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and in the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. John would have been the last and perhaps the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. He preached a message of repentance. He preached a message of judgment just like Elijah did. Let's talk about his baptisms. 
Which, by the way, we're having baptism here on Christmas Eve. Isn't God good? Excited about that. As we talk about baptism, it's important that we know what it means. The word baptize actually means to dip or immerse. As we'll see in a few minutes, Jesus himself was fully immersed. This is why we fully immerse. We follow his example of baptism. We want to do it the way he did. It's the reason we do it that way. Baptism has a representation. It represents the putting away of the old man in sin and being refreshed as the new man, clean before Jesus. The water represents the washing away of our sin. We don't believe that baptism adds to or takes away from salvation. Don't believe that. It is only an outward expression of an inward decision. It's what it is. We shouldn't neglect baptism because we are following the example of Christ. In the days of John the Baptist, he had authority from heaven to baptize. Jews in those days would baptize Gentile converts. John was actually baptizing Jews. These baptisms were baptisms of repentance. And his baptisms had two purposes. One was that he prepared the nation for the coming of Christ. And the other was that it presented Christ to the nation. Jesus' baptism was not one of repentance because he lived a sinless life. Had no need to repent. If you read verses 13 and 17, you'll see that John the Baptist even tried to stop Jesus from being baptized. Why was Jesus baptized? Well, first of all, it was the Father's will. It also gave validity and it gave approval to the ministry of John the Baptist. And he also identified himself with the publicans and all the sinners, which were the very people that he had come to save. Mainly his baptism represented his future baptism on the cross. This is where the sins of the world would engulf him. The waves of God's judgment would consume him. John chapter 10, verses 39 to 42, shows us that because of John's witness, many of the sinners trusted Jesus Christ. It says this again, they tried to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. Then Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing in the early days. There he stayed. Many people came to him. They said, though John never performed a sign, all that John said about this man was true. And in that place, many believed in Jesus. Folks, this Bethlehem or this peace candle, this preparation candle, candle of the way, however you'd like to call it, It was lit today for a purpose. It was lit to remind us of what we need to be doing until Jesus comes. It's John the Baptist's responsibility was to pave the way for Jesus. Listen, this is also our responsibility. It's what we're designed to do. Listen, we got to have our house in order. We do. We have to be a witness to others as we share the gospel with what is a lost and a dying world. To do that, we have to be clean before the Lord. Get you right where you are, every head bowed, every eye closed. Let me ask you today this question. Are you prepared? Are you ready? Do you have peace in your heart, even today knowing that there is nothing in your life that's separating you from God? Do you have that? Church, let me ask you this. Listen. What is it in your life right now that's costing you your peace. 
What is it? Is it too big for God? What is it that's causing you to sacrifice your peace? Listen, church, it's not too big for God. It's not too big for Him. Ask Him to forgive you today. Become clean in Jesus Christ. Listen, you're not too dirty. There's nothing that He cannot forgive you for. He loves you. He wants you to be clean so that you can do your part to help prepare the way. Will you do that today? Ask Him to make whatever this roughness is in your life smooth. Ask Him to do that today. You don't have to spend your Christmas this year without peace. Jesus has it all and He shares it with all of us. All we have to do is ask. We have peace through the love of Jesus Christ. Would you come and make it right with Him today? Get yourself clean before the Lord. Our altar is open. You can come and pray with me. You can come and pray at the altar. I would just ask you to get it right wherever you are. Would you do that today? Would you stand with me? Michelle's going to sing an invitation song for us. Would you come this morning? Make it right with the Lord today. You come. I see shadows. You come. Don't wait. You see hope. I see broken. But you see beautiful. And you're helping me to believe. You're restoring me piece by piece. You're not too dirty, church. You come. There's nothing too dirty that you can't make well. Get yourself clean. Beating inside my chest. Come and repent of the sin that's in your life today. Get rid of that. Oh, I'm coming alive. You don't have to carry it with around. Joy and destiny. Come this morning, make it right with the Lord.
freedom this morning. I am clean, washed in the blood of your sacrifice. Your blood flowed red and made me white. My dirty rags are purified. I am clean, washed in the blood of your sacrifice. Whatever it is, ask Him to remove it from you as far as the east is from the west. The Bible says that He will do that. Suzanne is going to play for just a few, few moments. But you come this morning. Let's get it right with the Lord today. We'd like to thank you for joining us on Facebook Live this morning. I truly hope that you've been blessed by something that's been said this morning. We just want to glorify the Lord here at Cornerstone. I pray that you've made a decision for Jesus Christ today. If you don't know him, I pray that you have come to know him this morning as your personal Savior. If you have, drop us a line. You can go to cbcaken.com backslash contact. And you can leave me a message there. You can send me an email. It'll come directly to me. And that will let me know exactly what your decision for the Lord was. If you just need a prayer request, anything like that that you may need, that's a great place for you to go to do that. So join us again. We'll be live again on Facebook Live next Sunday morning at 1045. And then also on Wednesday nights, we're live at 630 for a Bible study. So join us. We'd love to see you there. Have a great, great day.